Hi everyone and welcome back to the Multiverse of 100 plus data science project series. In this video, I am going to discuss about the Mobi recommending system using Python and machine learning. So without any further ado, let us start the tutorial now. So before jumping in the code, you need to also know that what is recommending system and what are the type of that. So there are two types of recommending system are available in the market. So first one is called the content based filtering and second one is called the collaborative filtering. So let's have a look what is actually content based filtering. So content based filtering is a recommendation strategy that suggests the items similar to those users have a previously liked. I mean the previously liked item should be recommended to the users so that they can actually buy the product. Okay. So it calculates the similarity opened using the cosine similarity between the user preference and their item attribute. We are actually building one recommendation system for the Netflix using this content based filtering. So how are you going to using the cosine similarity, right? So if you miss this out, so please check this out. Link will be in the descriptions. Then now this is called the collaborative filtering. So collaborative filtering is a recommendation strategy that consider the user behavior, see user behavior and compare it with other users in the database. That means if you have a multiple number of users, they actually try to checking the user behavior and compare it to the user one to user two. Okay, user one to user two and try to recommend to the users. So it use the history of all the users to influence the recommendation algorithms. So now let's see uh, the types of the collaborative filtering. There are two types of collaborative filtering available in the markets. So that's called the item based and another one also called the user based. But if we going to combine this both, I mean content based and also the collaborative filtering based. So there is new recommendation system are actually arise. It's called the hybrid recommendation system. Which one is right now in the training topic. So if you are building one recommendation system for Amazon or the Google or YouTube, whatever. So they actually use in this one. It's called the hybrid recommendation system. So hybrid means combine of the both of the filtering. I mean the recommendation system. So now let's see the types of the collaborative filtering. See, we have the two types of collaborative filtering. One is called the user-based collaborative filtering and second one is called the item-based collaborative filtering. So in this case, you can use in this one's item-based collaborative filtering. But before that, you to also learn that what is actually user-based collaborative filtering. See, user-based collaborative filtering aims to recommend item to the user A based on the preference of the similar user in the database. That's mean, let's say you have a user called A. Now, based on the similar user, they have a multiple number of user, maybe B, C, D, whatever. So they actually try to give you the recommendations based on the preference of the similar users. It involves creating a matrix of item related, rated, liked or clicked by each user. That means you're creating one matrix. It will creating a matrix from based on the rating. They actually give, let's say four a star or five a star or 10 out of eight or five. They actually do it based on the rate and how many likes, how many likes or how many click, how many click can be happened. Based on that, they actually compare the similarity score between the users. Yeah, you can also using the cosine similarity as well. And then suggesting the items that user A has not encountered yet, but similar user have the liked. That's in based on the rating, based on the liked, and based on the click, they actually give you the recommendations. So that's what it's called the user-based collaborative filtering. Now, this is the one we're going to be building this one. So item-based collaborative filtering. See, item-based collaborative filtering focused on finding the similar movie instead of similar user to recommend the user A based on their past preferences. See, in here, it actually gave you uh, the recommendations based on the rating, liked, and as well as the click. So here, it can find the similar movie, okay, find it instead of similar users. Okay, it will find the similar movies instead of the similar users. See, it identify the pairs of the movies rated, liked by the same user. That's mean it's just not only uh, working on the rating or click or like, it will try to identify it's just like a peers, it's just like a peer with the same users. I mean, user by user. Let's say I am I am Mishu and let's say another person, let's say call Chando. Okay, they are two types, I mean A or B. So what you can do, let's say I am uh, watching the movie called, let's say Iron Man. Okay, same things if I rate it or liked it and another one, let's say call Chando, I mean the user B it will also recommend me this kind of movie from the superhero, superhero genre. Just like it will recommend here the Avenger, the end game, just like that. That's mean based on my, based on my similarity, based on my rating and the like, it will give you, give you the recommendation. And you can see measure the similarity across all of the user who rated both. And then such so similar films based on their similar discord. That's mean if I, let's say user uh, like the uh, superhero genres movie, yeah, 
user B also like these ones. So this is how your item based collaborative filtering actually work. So now what I'm going to do is simply go on the Jupyter notebook and also try to do that, that how can you build in this Mobi recommended system using Python and machine learning. Well, so for building the machine learning model for the Mobi recommended system, we are going to be using this dataset called Mobi Lens 20 million dataset. This is nothing but 205 MB. If I go down, you have, uh, you can see links or movies or rating and the tags. But you're not going to use this one because this is a quite a big data set. So you're going to be using this a small one. Okay, we're going to use this one. That's called Mobi Lens Small Larger Data Set because I don't have this kind of memory for uh, uh, building these models. So that's why I'm going to be using this one. That's called Mobi Lens Small uh, Lattice Data Set. So it's having the links, the movies, the rating, and the tags as well. Okay, same things in the uh, large data set. It's just me, nothing but portion of the data set, right? So I'm simply going to go on here and try to download this data set from here. All right, so you can see here, I downloaded the data set from the Kaggle and also extract the file. So for this case, you're going to be using the Jupyter Notebook, you can use using the Google Colab or PyCharm itself. So I'm simply going to open in these ones and also you can see here, see the file, links.csv, movies.csv, rating.csv, and readme.txt file and also tags, okay? So I'm simply going to open in this one. This is nothing but empty IPMB file. Well, so that's our notebook is ready right now. And I'm simply going to be importing here some library. So let's first importing here pandas as pd. Then I'm going to be importing here numpy as np. So you can use the shift under as well as you can click in this button. Now let's go on the folder where you have the data set. So it has the link.csb, the movies.csb, the rating.csb, and as well as tax.csb. So we're going to be building one item based collaborative filtering. I mean, item based collaborative filter based uh, recommended system. So that's why you need to have in the ratings or the likes or the clicks. So you have the rating.csv file. So you can use in these ones called rating.csv file. So from the rating.csv file, you're going to be building our full model. As well as you need to have in this movie.csv so that we can show the recommendations, right? So now let's go on here and try to, let's say, movies equal to pd rate underscore csv. And after that, I need to give you the path. So let's say movies dot csv and as well as i need to creating one variable called ratings so let's say pd dot read under the csv and after that i can pass in here my rating uh, dot csv okay that's our file is ready so now we can check in this movies dot hat okay and you can see how the movies look like it's called toy story uh jumanji quite uh, goat movie and waiting to exhale Father of the Bride Part 2, okay, comedy, adventure, comedy, adventure, fine. Then we have the ratings, so let's try to take it and try to check in the head. Well, you can see here, it's nothing but the user ID, having the movie ID, the rating, and as well as the timestamp. The both of the column, we have the movie ID, same movie ID columns. You can see movie ID, movie ID, and as well as it have the title, and you can see the rating. You can see here the rating. So using this rating, what I can do, we're simply going to building here our uh, machine learning model so that it can classify them. Now here is the problem. See, in the user one, user one, user one giving the rating for movie number one. User one giving the rating for the movie number three, okay, four. But it it having a missing about the two number movie. For the number two movie, see you have the number two movie is called the Jumanji. So it's not rating this movie. It's not rating this movie. So yeah, here's the problem that user one giving the rating for the uh, movie number one, movie number three, movie number six, movie number 47, movie number 50. But they're missing someone. Two, uh, four, five, eight, up to 47, it's missing. It's missing. So now, how can you handle them? How can you handle them? That's when there's some missing value. There's some missing value. If I try to making this uh, full data set just like in paper tables, I mean, having the having the user ID in the columns and having the uh, rating in the row, okay, in the row. So what should be that? How it look like? So let's say we have the user ID cards one, two, three, four, five. It's called let's say user ID. It's called the user ID. Now let's say uh, we have also we have also let's say we have also let's say this is one, this is two, this is. Three, this is four okay so it's nothing but my rating okay that's my rating or you can say movie id okay movies id now based on the movie id we're going to be replacing here all of our ratings so let's say we can check like that let's say this one uh, like that 
see what actually happening here let's say the user run user one rating user one rating for the movie number one for movie number one is nothing but four now user one user one rating for the movie number movie number three is nothing but four see again movie number four equal to four now you can see two is missing that's mean it's none it's none it's none and it as well as this name right now we need to also check in for the movie number two i mean user id two so this is how our pivot table is created i mean our matrix is created our matrix is created yeah we can create in this kind of matrix using the pivot tables is in the pivot table that's been in our uh, in, in this case we have the user id and in here we have the movie id that's been in the index i mean the row we have the movie id and in the column it having the user id now based on that what i can do you can simply going to creating here one matrix you can create a matrix i mean which user is liking which movie or giving the rating for the which movie so let's try to do that and i'm trying to comment out these lines okay so what i can do we can uh, creating here one pivot table okay pivot table based on the rating so let's say pivot and after that you can give me the index index is starting with a row so in the row we have the movie id right so we have the movie id so let's say movie id I mean this one movie ID and after that in the column what do you have in the columns we have the user ID so call user ID okay now in the bellows in the bellows it having the rating it's having the rating let's say bellows uh, it having the rating okay it's called the ratings okay fine now you can see uh, in having the rating fine so that's our data set so let's say it's our final data set final data set okay so now what you can do let's shift enter and let's try to check this one that is look like that that we discuss about now you can see it having the user id here one two three four like that and also you can see here movie id having one two three four and you can see for the movie number one it having four for the movie number three it having the four so this is how we're creating here our data set okay so now what I can do we simply going to checking the nail menu and try to replace with the zero so how can I do that we can using here final underscore data set and we can using here the dot fill line and we can fill in with the missing value the zero and let's try to making the replace equal to true so let's say in place equal to true okay cool now let's check in this one let's say final data set uh, dot head okay fine now you can see how the data set look like you can see here uh, now all the NAND value is replacing with a zero, zero. Okay, fine. So that's our uh, that's our ready actually. Now you can see our data set is ready right now. But here is the problem that you can see here it having so much missing value. So because this is rating, because this is rating, so that's why uh, the rating is nothing but should be sparse. Okay. Some user give the rating, some user not. In my same my YouTube video, some user actually give the like or some user not. So that's why a sparse uh, as per is nothing but happening in the ratings okay so that's why you need to also handle this one you need to handle this one it's called the removing noise from the data set removing uh, noise from data set okay now how can you remove the noise from the data set let's say i am a seasonal i am a seasonal movie fan okay so recently i watched a movie uh, called sala okay sala okay so because I'm a seasonal movie fan, I just watch movie uh, in a one year. Let's say I, I watch one movie. Let's say I watch uh, 15 movies in a one year. 15 movies in one year. That's when I'm a seasonal movie fan. I don't have any knowledge about the movies. Right? I think about I watch movies so a lot. Okay? So now the question is, let's say I'm a user. I giving, let's say in the 15, 15 movies I saw in one year. So let's say I give you the five ratings. Five ratings for the five movies. Five ratings for the five movies. See, I'm a seasonal movie fan, so that's why I don't have any knowledge about the movies. Quite good. Let's say same, same, or let's one of my fan watching, let's say 15 movies in a one year. Okay, 115 movies in a one year. So let's say he also giving you the 100 rating. So because <laughs> if I compare this one's my rating with this rating, with this rating, with my friend rating, ratings, yeah, this is really very correct because he watching movies. He watching movies. So this is how we can actually creating here one bar where we can actually consider then which movie is qualified. So let's say a minimum number of 10. 
and minimum number of tenant is nothing but a host affiliate and the user should not vote it for at least 50 at least 50 users should be voting for the rating for rating i mean at least vote that yeah this is a good movie so we're simply going to consider in this one we're simply going to consider this one now not checking this number of user voted so let's say number of user voted and as well as the number of user the number of user uh, which one give the movies voted okay there's a number of user voted how many users and as well as number of movies voted so how can i taking this ones we can taking this ones from the ratings so from ratings we can use it in the group by so let's say group by and after that we can give him the movie id so let's say give it here uh, movie id and after that we can taking from the from the ratings so let's say rating and we can using the aggregation functions it should be the count because we're going to counting that we simply going to count in that same things you can copy this out and instead of using the movie id you need to have the user id i need to have the user id fine so now we have the number of user voted and number of movies is voted fine so if you try to check in this ones so see those are the users who actually voted that number of user one i mean the first user giving the voting for two to five okay if you're checking this number of movies should be the voted in some movie may be matching you can see number of the users i mean user number one voting for 232 quite well quite well now we can also plot in this out so let's see import from matplotlib uh, dot pi plot pi plot as plt okay matplotlib dot pi plot as plt what does index errors so from matplotlib okay not from it should be the import okay so import matplotlib to pyplot as plt fine now what i can do we need to give him a style let's give him a style called use let's using the ggplot ggplot and after that what i can do we can creating the subplot so let's say figure and as well as axis okay because we have the two plot so first one is nothing but the flow the rating and another one is nothing but the threshold so we have the 10 the movie who is and as well as the 15 for the users right so what you can do you can use the plt dot subplot subplots okay so what i can do you can using a subplot for 1 comma 1 because in the same uh, figure so you can as well as giving the fixed size and after that you can using here 1 6 comma 4 fine now we can using the scatter plot so let's say plt dot scatter and after that you can using a number of users should be voted so this was number of user voted we can do it here and as well as we are taking the index and number of users should be voted because we're going to get in the plot based on the number of users should be voted so how many users so let's say color giving here color so let's say hot pink okay and also we can using here plt dot let's say x h line it's nothing but for the threshold so number of users should be voted at least 10 or number of movies should be voted at least 15 okay this is not much threshold below so what i can do you can give me here y equal to 10 just we're going to creating here a line so that you can see that let's say color equal to let's say green color okay now you can using here one axis so let's say plt dot x level so you can give it movie id movie id and after that you can using here plt dot y label you can using here let's say number of users voted okay then you can using here plt dot show so plt dot show fine now you can see uh, after 10 how many user is actually removed so those are the users should be removed on our data set okay it's not uh, voted correctly okay so we can remove in this uh, below from our data set so what you can do we can using the idoc functions that's a final data set dot lock and we can using here number of user voted user voted okay from number of user voted user voted because we have the list which one is less than equal to 10 and you're going to take in the index and after that you can taking all of them 
so this is about my final data set if i check in this ones so now if i try, try to print this on final data set uh, you can see here it have been two one two one and six one zero or ten zero column okay so now uh, if i am checking this ones in this final data set you can see six one zero columns uh six and zero columns i think i need to check it from here as well just going to move in this ones and try to run the shelf before that okay so that you can check that yes threshold is working so you can see just to wait yeah you can see it having the nine seven two four rows now it will convert it into the two one six two one two one it's nothing but the rows it's not a rows for the user id sorry movie id sorry movie id or user id user id okay now user id user id is nothing but six one zero it almost same now let's also reduce them based on the movie id based on the movie id we can reduce the we can reduce it to the user ID. same again again see based on my user id we reduce the movie id now based on the movie id we're going to reduce the reduce the user id because some of the user is not voted so how many movies should be actually calculated that's a 50 at least 50 so what i can do we simply going to creating here one plot again so just copy this one and after that i can post it here i mean paste it here uh then after that i can copy this ones uh here we go yes number of movies voted and we can paste it here and as well as you can paste it here okay same as cutter plot now we need to giving here the 50 okay now we can make in this movie id should be the user id so let's say user id okay now you can see how it look like okay there's are nothing but the movies nothing but the movies now what i can do we can simply going to remove in those movies removing this movies so you can copy this ones and after that you can paste it here and after that we can copy this number of movies should be voted okay let's get removing this ones let's take in the first one and after that you can say the number of movies should be voted and as well as number of voted is get equal to 50. cool now it also taking the index so let's say index uh index okay so that's it now if you try to check in this one call final underscore data set dot shape you can check this one you can see how the shape look like it's converted into 378 i mean so many movies uh, id is removed that's when noise is removed so if i had to check this my data set that's a final uh, data set dot hat oh just to white see how the data set look like okay so it's removing the sparsity it's removing the sparsity of my data set okay but here is also one problem on my data we need to also check in the sparsity so it's just removing simple things for the noise from the data but we need to also remove the uh, sparsity from our data set now the question is why sparsity was why sparsity so you're going to be using here the small data set you're going to be using the small data set let's say if you're using here the large amount of data set so what will be happen it will take much more amount of time so that's why I need to remove the sparsity. If I if I am checking this one, see we have the two one uh, two one three uh, seven eight. If I try to calculate them, let's say uh, into uh, into you can see it nothing but eight zero one seven three eight. Okay, it's just like it's just like nothing but uh, mostly in the one lakhs. Okay, and most of the values are sparse because this is nothing but the rating so you are using one small data set that we already discussed about that okay if you are using the large amount of data set i mean the movies lens data set that one to million it will take more time it will take in more time so our system were run out of the computational actual resources because i'm using here my own pc if you are using the google collab yeah you can use in this large data set so that's why you use the csn matrix functions from the scipy and to reduce the sparsity so that it's not taking the time so what I can do now, we can import it from the SciPy. So let's try to import from SciPy. Okay, SciPy dot sparse. We're simply going to import it here the CSR matrix. CSR matrix. Okay, CSR matrix. Okay. Now, <laughs> question is, what is actually sparse? What is actually sparse? So let's try to taking an example. So let's take in some sample. That's a sample. Let's say we have an array array so it's nothing but let's say 
same value let's say 1 comma 0 comma 0 comma let's say 0 let's say 0 and after that after that what you can let's taking another one let's say 0 comma 0 comma let's say 2 comma 0 comma 0 comma 1 okay then let's taking another one so let's say 0 comma 0 comma 4 comma 0 comma let's 0 that's all sample data now what is the equation or what is the rule for the sparsity see in our data set it having most of the number are zero most of the number are zero so that's called the sparsity that's called the sparsity i mean a sparse matrix i think you learn about in the intermediate the sparse matrix how the sparse matrix look like a sparse matrix means uh, if you want to count that that's the number of non zeros number of non zeros is divided by sample size is divided by sample size that's mean let's say if i check in this one let's say np dot first let's count non zeros let's count uh, non zero non zero then after that what you can do you can take it from samples and divide with divide with the sample size the sample uh, sample dot size so that's called the sparsity that's mean count the non integers i mean non zeros and divide the sample size so it's better we can make in a float because it will uh, give you some floating point numbers so and let's start to make a sample size now you can see this is noun count now if i try to take in the samples um, values in the percentage format what i can do you can minus it from the 1.0 okay this is how you can calculate the sparsity so this is how it's called the sparsity so let's say sparsity fine now if I try to print in the forms, so let's try to print in the forms, let's try to print the sparsity. Okay. Let's copy the form and try to print it out. So setting and dimensions with the sequence that equals array have the inhumous matrix related to shape 3 plus in homing Okay, let's try one plus zero, zero, two, zero, zero. Okay. It have in the five, but it have in the six. So that's why it's giving this kind of error. So it also have in the five. Okay, now it should work. You can say sparsity is nothing but 0 0.8. Okay. So if I try to pass in the same data inside my CSR matrix, inside my CSR matrix, let's say uh, CSR uh, matrix, and I'm going to pass in here my samples, and that's my CSR sample. CSR sample. And now if I try to print in this one, this is also called a sparse matrix. CSR matrix. Okay, now you can see if I try to print in this one, not matrix one. See if I print in the CSM matrix, it's nothing called a sparse matrix from the scipy. So this is how it look like. From the zero to zero, it having the one. From one to two, from one to two, it having the two. From two to two, it having the four. So same. See, four, two, and also you can see one. From zero to zero, zero row and zero column, it having the one. And uh, for the, uh, column number row number one and column number two this one because you start from zero two four so how the sparse matrix is converted into one csr matrix now if you're trying to pass in this data inside the machine learning model it can identify it easily because we have more amount of zeros so let's remove them so that's why you're going to be using here this one tactic now we need to apply this matrix i mean apply this tactic inside the full data set so what i can do you can use it here c as our matrix and you can pass in here my final uh, data set. That's the final data set uh, dot values. Okay, fine. Now this is our CSR data. CSR underscore data. Okay. Now what I can do is simply going to set index. So that's the final data set. And after that, we can using the reset index. Reset index because we need to reset the index as well. And let's start making the index equal to true. Well, so that's our CSR data is ready. So let's start checking this ones. And here we go. It's a sparse matrix because it's passing through this one. And if I try to print in this one, uh, then we can check in this ones. Yeah, this is how the data look like. You can see for the zero to zero, it having the four. From zero to three, it having the 4.0. From zero to six, it having 2.5. That's mean it is removing all of them zero from the data set. This is how you can handle the sparse matrix because it having so much kind of zero. Fine. Now what I can do, we can apply the machine learning algorithm to actually classify the movies. 
So what I can do for, because this is a classification problems, as well as class time types of point, because it has some data point. So what I can do, you can use it in the KNN. We can use it in the KNN. So let's say from sklearn uh, dot uh, neighbors, from neighbors, so what I can do, you can import in here the nearest neighbors, because you need to check in the nearest movie from the each of the data point, right? So from the neighbors, we can be inputting here the nearest neighbors. So what you can do, you can using here the nearest uh, neighbors, this ones. So now let's creating here one instance for KNN. So let's say nearest neighbors. And inside that, what you can do, you need to give here the matrix. So <laughs> we can calculate the uh, matrix similarity using the cosine similarity. So you can give here the matrix as well as uh, the cosine similarity. Or let's say cosine, C-O-S-I-N, cosine. And after that, call algorithm. So, which algorithm we're going to be using here? Broth first algorithm, right? So, let's say B R U T E. Checking the one by one. And after that, we're going to be giving here number of neighbors. Number of neighbor. So, number of neighbor, let's say neighbors. How many more be? Let's give here 20. Let's give number of jobs. Let's give it here one. Uh, minus one, sorry. Now what I can do is simply to fit it with our data. So let's fit in our Huchi data, in our CSR data. Fine. So expect the call algorithm. Okay, algorithm. <laughs> okay, sorry. Algorithm. Okay, can I fit? You can see one of the CSR data. See again. See what I can do. See first we input here the uh, library called pandas, then numpy, and loading here the movies as well as the rating. Then we're checking for the ratings. So in rating, we have some sparsity. So that's why we're going to creating here on pivot table and creating here our final data set. Now in our final data set, it's having some NAND value. So that's why we're going to be replacing with zero. You can see replace with zeros. And after that, you can see there are so many missing value. I mean zero. It's it actually because in rating, in the real world rating, it will be having some sparsity because no some user are giving the rating, some user not. So that's why what you can do is simply going to remove the noise from our data set. So that's why what you can do, we consider the 10 number of users. Uh, should be the host and number of 15 movies should be voted. So we can be creating here one matplotlib to visualize these ones. And after that, we can giving here this indexing to removing this noisy data from our data set. And after that, we can do the same thing for the user voted as well for the user ID based on the user ID. And simply what I can do is simply going to have in this data. Now we can simply going to pass in this data inside our CSR matrix so that we can remove this zero from our data set because it's, uh, the, it's having the problem with the sparsity, right? Now we have the data sets ready and as well as we train our model. Okay. Well, so now what I can do, we simply going to define here a function called the get recommendations and which one taking one movie name and based on the movie name, we are going to recommend the movies for the users. So let's define it. Let's def get uh, recommendation. So it will take in one movie name. So let's say movie underscore name. Okay. Now based on this movie name, we need to search in this movie name inside our data set. If I go up, so that's our data set, it's called the movies, it having a property called titles. Now based on the title, we can check in that if the movie is available or not. Maybe user giving here some wrong input as well. So we need to also check in that if the movie list is available in my data set or not. So for that, we can handle this one. So let's making it out. Let's say from the movies, we are taking the movies and let's giving here title because we're gonna check it based on the title, right? So now what you can do is simply going to steer dot contents we need to convert them into the contents i mean uh, string after that you can search in the movie name right so let's making one here movie name now this is inside my movie list so let's say movie list okay so now if i try to check and searching on that and try to print it out list and shift enter now if i call in these functions called the get recommendations that you can see just to white so what I can do, we simply going to, let's go it here and try to making it out. That's a movies dot hat. Okay. So let's taking one movie name. Let's call toy tree. This one. So let's give it here. Okay. Now you can see it having the index and also you have the movie ID, the title and the genres. Okay. Now you can see, uh, it's it, it told me that it's nothing but one empty index okay so what you can do let's remove this ones now you can see here we got here the toy story the toy story 2 the toy story 3 okay say so how i actually gave it with the uh, or, or, or the years it will give me some kind of empty 
So let's say I'm trying to making it out. Let's say blah, 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 like that. So you can see here, same thing, empty data frame. Uh, that's mean it's not searching the movie correctly. So what you can do, what I can do, let's say you can see Toy Story. So if I using here, this one, you can see here the Toy Story, the Toy Story 2, as well as Toy Story 3. I'm going to give me the movie list from my data set. Now what I can do, you need to also check in this one, that our movie list is empty or not. If it is empty, that means it's nothing but an, a condition that movie is not found in your data set. Movie is not found in your data set. That means you can't recommend. We can't recommend. So what I can do, so we can uh, take in this one, let's say, uh, we're going to check in this one. Let's say if, uh, if the length of the movie list, okay, if the length of the movie list, I mean, if, if it is have the length, so what I can do is simply going to print it out. Let's move it found, move is found. And otherwise, what I can do, you can simply going to take it out. Let's call print, uh, movie is not found, movie not found, like that. So you can see, you can see movie found. If I try to make any changes this one, let's say, da, da, da. You can see movie not found. Now we can check this out. We can found the movie or not. Okay. So if the user give the correct input, it will find the movie name. Now we got the movie name, right? Now we need to, we need to making this movie list. Uh, I mean, we need to actually uh, complete these ones. Okay. So what I can do now, first we need to take in this index number based on my movie ID. Based on my movie ID, I can take in this one because in our KNN, in our KNN, it will give me some number. It's not giving the text. That's why we need to take in this index number so that we can pass it in, in our data set. I mean, in our model. So what you can do, you can simply going to take it out. Let's take it out uh, from here. So let's say what they have, we have the movie list. We have the movie list, I mean, all of the movie list. And then we can using here, I lock zero. Okay, zero. Then what I can do, you can simply go into using here the movie ID. Now you can see why actually giving the zero. Why this one is zero? Because you're going to take in the first one. You're going to take in the first one. If I'm using the toy stream, if I'm using the toy stream and trying to print it out, then you can see. Yes, you can see here print the movie list. Uh, movie list. Then you can see it's also found the movie and you can see some list. Now you can see here toy stream, toy stream 2, toy stream 3. It will found. If I'm trying to remove this just with toy, just toy. Then you can see here so many movie is found. Toy Story, Babes in the Toyland, Toys, Babes in Toyland, so many, so many. So what it can do, it will take in the first one, this first index, first index, okay? So first index, so Toy Story, fine. You can see here now it's the first index. So you're taking the first index one. Now this is nothing but, this is nothing but movie index. So this is my movie index, IDX. And if I try to print this one, just try to make in this one and try to printing it out. I'm taking time here because it is really important. Okay, you can see one. It's nothing but one because Toy Story is one. You can see Toy Story one movie ID. So if I try to use in this one, waiting to Excel. And if I try to use in this one, and you can see four. You can see movie ID is four. Now we got here our movie index. We got here our movie index. Now what I can do, we need to sourcing this movie index in our final data set. In our final data set, I mean these ones. Uh, this is the final data set. In final data set, we need to sourcing these ones. So what I can do, you can go on here. So let's say final data set. Okay. Now from the final data set, what I can do, uh, we're going to sourcing the movie ID. So let's say movie ID, which also have the movie ID, right? If it is equal, equal, to the movie index idx that means it is available in my final data set right so what i can do index and take in the first one so this is my final movie index so let's make it out and if i start seeing this one now you can see it got in some index error index zero out of range bound of axis zero with the size zero so let's try to check in this one is there any or not if it is movie id equal to zero then index is equal to equal to zero. So movie list. Okay, let's try to making this one. Test a toy history. And try to check this one. What kind of error we got? Okay. Okay, you see, you, you see here we got here the zero. That's mean this waiting to Excel is not available in our data set. I hope so. Okay, just wait. Okay, why not? Because this user, this user, I hope so, is not getting 
it's not giving here uh, the rating for that too much. That's why it is removed because it's not giving here the access name. That's when movie is not found. Okay. So if we try to using this ones, uh, using this ones. Okay. Okay. See here too. I got here the uh, index in our data set because we reset here the data set. So we had to use in this one, Jumanji, and try to check in this one. Okay, you can see movie not found. Okay, movie, it's called Mumanji. Okay, one, but why this ones? I don't know why. But into Excel, let's try to use in this one. I don't know why it's not getting. It's called index zero. Okay, I think it's not getting it here. Okay, if I try to print in this one, that's the printing here the movie list, uh, movie list as well, and you can get in this one. You can see we take Excel, okay, we title this one. So this is a zero, right? Uh, movie ID, this one is a four. So index equal to movie index in our final data set. I think in our final data set, this is missing. This is, I hope so, this is missing. That's why this kind of error. I don't know why. So let's copy this one and paste it out. Yeah, now you can see it's called the movie not found. Yeah, some cases you need to giving this with the <laughs> with the error. So that's why some cases it's not found. Yeah, but when we building this full applications, I hope so it will find work. Okay, so this is how you can see the empty data set. I mean, it's not available in my uh, in my data frame. I mean, in the final data set because we're using here some threshold. It will remove some movies name from the data set. So that's why. So what I can do. Uh, we can we can now let's making it out toy story toy story okay toy story i hope so okay now it's fine <laughs> because we're giving the same things uh because we are not making it lower so that's why this kind of error okay it's still tax to do that to making it lower okay now we got here the movie idx so now what i can do we need to using this movie idx uh in our CSS data I mean our sparse data and try to fit with our model. So let's try to pass it out. So what I can do, we can using here KNN. I mean that's my model. KNN dot K neighbors. K neighbors. So inside that, what I can do, we can pass our data as like the CSS data, and inside that we can pass in your movie index, my movie IDX. Okay. So CSS data is means this one, this one. Yes, the data because inside the data we have the other data point other data points so that's why some kind of movie is missing that you can see okay so this is what data now we pass it out and what i can do is simply going to giving here a number of neighbors so let's say neighbors okay let's give it a 10 i mean 10 mobiles then after that what i can do uh we can make it let's say 10 plus one because with this movie one i mean the movie name i actually give it here you with this one, we need to recommend here 11 movies. This movie and another 10 movies. Okay, then fine. So you have the model ready right now. So what I can do, it will give me the two things. One is called the distance and another is called the indices. Indices. Now, what I can do, we can simply go into, let's try to printing it out. Let's try to print the distance. Okay. So you can see here, this is the distance matrix. These are distant matrix for each of the columns. I mean, each of the movie name. It's starting by the distance because you're going to using here the user behavior as well as the rating. So if you try to check in this indices, indices, then you can see it's nothing but the index number of the movie. Index number of the movie. You can see zero. I mean, zero means this toy story. And 217 is nothing but the movie name. I mean, the index number. Now, based on this index number, we can found the movie name. But it's better we can combine this distance and the indices so that we can show this just like a data frame. So for that, what I can do, we can simply going to combine them. So let's say making it shorter. So I'm going to short it out and try to zip it out. Try to zip it out and inside the zip. So what I can do, we can give in here indices. Indices dot. We can use it in the sequence. Okay, we can use it in a sequence. Just combine this distance as well as the indices. Then after that, what I can do, we simply going to make it list. Then we can using here the distance. And we can we can also sequence it. Okay. Sequence dot to list. Okay. 
Then after that, what I can do, we need to also giving her one key. So what you can do, let's combine them and try to make it a list so that we can pass it, it into uh, Pandas data frame. So let's say make it a list. And after that, we can give in here one key. So our key is nothing but my lambda x of x of one. I mean the first index number. Then what I can do, we're gonna take in this all of them from here. So let's say uh, zero to uh, minus one, I mean all of them. So it, what it can do, it can it will try to short it this one and taking one data set and try to making it in a list. Okay, so this is nothing but our uh, the movie synthesis. So we can basically call this our uh, let's record it movie uh, indices. Okay, if I try to printing this one, then you can see I'm going slowly because it's really important. So you can see here it have in the distance so it have the movie name as well as the distance so distance is nothing but why actually shorting this out uh, because of if i'm trying to paint in this one just uh distance and okay not distance actually indices okay distance okay so you can see so what you can see here this is not 0 0.33 0 0.35 0 0.37 0 0.38 38 like that okay so what you can do is simply going to making this out in a shortened manner. I mean, uh, descending order so that we can getting which one is really uh, correlated. I mean, the similarity score is, is, is very high. So that's how you're going to use in this one. Okay. So what I can do is simply going to print this one. Then you can see uh, this is the first one, 3.999. Then you can see 3.9 as well as we have the distance score. Now we can simply go to pass it this out inside in our data frame. So for that, what I can do, we have so many movies. So we can using human one follow. So let's say for bal in uh, recorded movie, this recorded movie indices. And from the indices, what I can do, you can take in the index number. So let's say final data set. Okay, final data set dot i lock. And we can pass in here my bal. And based on the bal, what I can do, you can take in the zero. I mean the first index one. And taking it based on the movie ID. So let's say movie ID. Okay, now this our movie index, right? Movie. Uh, index so I call IDX fine now we're to taking this movie name as well because we got here the value not the title right so it's also matching this out so what I can do you can simply going to take it from the movies so from the movies uh, movies we have the uh, uh, movie ID movie ID uh, based on the movie ID what I can do we need to uh, check in this one I mean cross check based on the movie ID index so movie uh, index I mean this movie index now it is okay then we're going to take in the index number so that's the index so that's my idx i mean movie id now based on this id what i can do we can simply going to define here one list that's called recommend let's say recommended movies and you can create a list and you can simply go to append here my movie name as well as my id so dot append and after that, we can give in here the title. So let's say title. And as well as we can taking it from the iLock. So let's say movie. Movies.iLock. And after that, we can give in here the IDX. And based on that, we can give the take title. Okay, so we have our movie name. Now let's giving it here values. Let's say values. Okay. Up zero. Now it's also taking here distance. So what I can do, you can making it distance. And after that, we can taking the value of the one. Why one? See, this is one uh, dictionary. Diction it's not even a tuple. So taking the first one is nothing but my titles, and the second one is nothing but my distance. Well, so now what I can do is simply going to define here a data frame. So what I can do, we can making this out. I cannot hear. Uh, okay, so let's making it out uh, inside that. Okay, df equal to pd dot data frame. And inside that, you can pass in here my recommended frame. I mean, recommended movies. And after that, you can give in here our index. So our index is range form. You can use the range functions. So one to number of movies is nothing but 10. And 10 plus 1 is equal to 11. So make it in 11. Okay, 11. And let's make it this was 11. So that's our data frame. So you can simply go to print it out. Data frame. So let's say df okay then that's what ready so use this one now you can see here we have the data frame as well as you can see titles 
this Goruk there, the lion Ling Ling Ling, this one, this one, this one. Okay, you can see. Try straight two, forest cam, and Jurassic Park. So based on that, it will give me the recommendations. So let's try to remove those ones, uh, remove those ones, and try to, uh, because this is a method, so we can return this one. So we can return. So let's say return the DF, and let's try to making it return so that we can use it in our applications. Okay, so let's try to make it out. Okay, so you can see here, it's nothing but one data frame. So this is how you can see titles and as well as the distance. And to take one more So if I'm trying to give here another one, so let's say movies. So what I can do, you can take in another one. Let's try to check it for the Iron Man. Is it available or not? Yeah, it's available. You can see up. The Guardian of the Galaxy, the Watchman, the Star Tag, the Batman Begins, the Avatar. So let's copy this one and try to paste it here. Okay, you can see here Avatar, it's called Joe Milan, the Inceptions, yeah, what movie? Then Kung Fu Panda, Iron Man, the District 9. Okay, up. So cool, it's really working very fine. So you can also remove these ones. So that's our recommended function is ready right now. Now what I can do is simply going to creating here our applications. So for creating the application, what I can do, uh, we're simply going to import here Gradio library. So let's import Gradio as GR. Then after that, uh, we have the recommendation function, right? Now we need to also checking this one. Let's say we give here one name, which one is not available. Let's say one, two. Now you can see movie not found. It's a movie not found. and also, it will giving one data frame. So when I try to show it in your Gradio library, you need to convert them into in string. You need to convert them this whole data frame into this string. So what you can do, you can simply go to define here another functions called let's say recommendation. Let's say recommendation. Okay, recommendations. Okay, or or said we can say the recommend movie. That is the code. Okay, so it can uh, taking the movie name. Okay, so we can the functions because of the radio interface. So what I can do, we can take in the data frame from our uh, one of my uh, variables. So we can giving it her. That's a get data frame. So it will give me one data frame, taking one movie name. Okay, so we got here on data frame. Now what I can do, we need to check in this if the data frame is it real data frame or not. If it is not, so we can show that this is not movie not found. So what I can do if is instance is in a stance of the df call pd dot data frame data frame then what i can do you can simply going to return here my df dot to string okay and we can simply going to pass in my index equal to false so why this one because see our functions giving me one data frame so how i try to showing this data frame in your applications let to convert them in instinct now I want to first check in that if it's real data frame or not. If it's not data frame, that's mean we can simply going to uh, return here the df. So let's say else we can return here my df. So my df is right now which one? This one. Who we not found? Okay, that's why I can return here the df. Fine. Now what I can do? We need to create in the interface. So let's say interface. We can actually f. It's a gr dot interface uh, interface, and after that we can give in here our functions. So let's say fn equal to function is nothing but this ones. This recommend movies. Okay, and after that, we can give in here the inputs. It's nothing but the text. We can give in the text. Okay, so then we have the outputs. Outputs is nothing but as well as the text because we can buy them with text. Okay. This is the greater library. You can also uh, develop it in your stream related applications. So yeah, I also recommend you to watching my Netflix movie recommend system, which is really very good. I discuss every single step in my notepad, not notepad, in pad. Okay, so you can also follow this video. Link will be in the description. Again, I'm talking about that. Okay, and let's give you a description. So description, uh, description equal to, let's say, enter. Enter a movie name to get a list 
of recommended movie okay movies so now we're simply going to launch the application let's search app dot launch shift enter well let's wait a few minutes and let's check this one is it working or not well so our application is ready so what you can do you click on this link it also showing up here so let's give in here one name movie name so let's give in here iron man let's make an iron man we get to submit and you can see up the guardian of the galaxy the watchman really good movie i loved the rocket okay start tech the batman begins the better the Iron Man 2 the Walti. The Dark Knight, the Avenger. Okay, quite good. We can also give in here one uh, name as well. Uh, in here, so what you can do, you can also give in here titles. So let's say title equal to movie recommender recommendation system. Okay, so you have a comma then a Okay, cool. So let's go open this one. Now it's really cool. So that's sort of making it one. Let's say Iron Man. So you can see submit. So let's copy this one, Garden of the Galaxy. Copy this one and paste it here and check. So you can see Star Wars, Captain America, Captain America, the first Avengers, the Iron Man 2. Let's copy this one and let's check this one. Call submit. Imagine Spider Man, the Amazing Spider Man, the Sherlock Holmes, the Ant Man. All of the nothing but the superhero movies, I mean MCU movies. Garden of the Galaxy, Iron Man 3, Iron Man, Avenger, the Avengers, X-Men, the first class. Okay, so this is how our movie recommendation system actually works using the collaborative filtering. So that's it for today now. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and make sure to subscribe to the channels and don't forget to hit the bell icon. So I'll be back with our tutorials. So till then take care and bye bye.